All right, guys, we are back with another episode, and today we are going to talk about Satan's little season. We're going to focus on a specific verse today, and uh, let's get right into it. So we're going to continue the topic of the millennial kingdom and the possibility that it maybe happened in our past, and that we are actually a lot further in the Bible than what we've been told. And if you're unfamiliar with the millennial kingdom, what it is, I did make a video on it months ago, and I'll post the links in my bio. I already talked about scriptural evidence for the millennial kingdom happening. I made a video on actual evidence for Armageddon happening. And today I want to talk about Satan's little season. And before I do, I usually mention this in all my videos concerning the millennial kingdom. I want to tell you guys about the timeline. I believe many believers are unaware of what the timeline actually is in scripture concerning the millennial kingdom from beginning to end what happens. So this is the timeline right here and you can look up the verses and chapters to read for yourself and I advise you to read it for yourself, research for yourself and, and like the Bible says, study to show yourself approved. You know, don't believe anybody blindly including me. So do your job as a believer and study to show yourself approved. And of course, pray about this. That's the first thing you should do before you look at anything. But be open to have your reality shattered because sometimes the truth is gonna upset you. It's gonna shatter your reality. It might not make you very happy. But the truth will set you free in the end, like Jesus said. Anyway, let's continue. So this is the timeline, basically, right here. During the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus is talking to his disciples, and his disciples are asking him, what sign should we look for for your return, you know, after he gets resurrected? And Jesus tells them all the signs. He said there's going to be war, there's going to be famine, there's going to be all these crazy events, there's going to be Armageddon, you know, and then I'm returning. He basically said there's going to be all this destruction, and then I return. After Jesus returns, there's a battle with Satan and the kings of the earth. And then there's a verse in Revelation 20, I believe, and it says that an angel from heaven comes down with a chain and locks up the devil in the bottomless pit for a thousand years. And this thousand years happens to be at the exact same time as the millennial kingdom is happening, meaning Christ and his saints rule the earth for a thousand years. And then after the thousand years are expired, Revelation says that Satan will be loosed for his little season to deceive the earth once more, to prepare the earth for the battle of Gog and Magog, whatever that could be. And then the final white throne judgment, and then a new heaven and a new earth. And this is the verse I want to focus on today. Revelations, verse, Revelations 20 verse 1, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. During this thousand years, that's when Christ and his saints ruled the earth. And continuing the verse, And cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled, meaning the thousand year kingdom on earth ends. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. So basically, after the millennial kingdom is fulfilled, right? Because the word millennium means a thousand years. After Christ and his saints rule for a thousand years, Satan is let loose for his little season. And I believe there's a strong possibility that we actually might be in this little season. And it says he's going to deceive and fool the nations once more. He's basically going to invert the truth of scripture. And we're going to talk about this today and the possible evidence for it. Now, I've been studying the millennial kingdom for months now. Like, I've been kind of obsessed with this topic. And I realized something very interesting. When I look back on all the videos I made, I realize it's all like connecting dots. I, I never meant for these videos to connect any dots. But all these videos have something to do with each other. And I believe it's all pointing to the topic of the millennial kingdom because I believe God works in all kinds of mysterious ways. And I never purposely meant it to connect dots like this, but I believe most of my videos have something to do with the millennial kingdom, whether I knew it or not. And looking back, I realized this is the case. Like one of the videos I want to talk about that I made concerning this topic of Satan's little season and the fact that we might be in it right now is I made a video on TikTok a long time ago. In fact, it went kind of viral. And I titled it basically, Is the Statue of Liberty the Statue of Lucifer? And I basically presented the idea or theory that what if the Statue of Liberty is actually a statue dedicated to Satan or Lucifer? If the Millennial Kingdom happened and Satan is let loose, my question is, would there be some kind of homage paid to Lucifer? Maybe a statue made in his honor to celebrate his release from prison? And I just had an epiphany in my room today. I was sitting and talking to my friend on Snapchat. And I realized, what if that's a possibility that the Statue of Liberty really is a statue dedicated to the devil? And how likely is that? So let's talk about a little bit about the history of the Statue of Liberty. So it says that the statue was dedicated on October 28th, 
1886. The sculptor is Frederick Auguste Bartholdi, and this metal framework was built by Gustav Eiffel. And apparently the Colossus of Rhodes, which was one of the ancient wonders of the ancient world, was actually one of the inspirations for the Statue of Liberty. The Colossus of Rhodes is the main source of inspiration for the Statue of Liberty. The Colossus of Rhodes was a statue of the 3rd century BC destroyed nowadays. It is invariably represented as an almost naked man wearing a crown of sunlight and brandishing a torch, so basically very similar to the Statue of Liberty. Let's talk about the meaning of the Statue of Liberty. Apparently, the statue is a symbol of freedom and justice. The Statue of Liberty is one of the most recognizable statues in the United States. It is often seen as a symbol of freedom and justice. Core principles in the United States Declaration of Independence from the British Empire in 1776. So the Statue of Liberty is holding a torch that represents enlightenment, which is in keeping the statue's official title, Liberty Enlightening the World, which is very interesting because many Luciferians refer to the devil as the enlightened one, the one who enlightens the world. So it's interesting that they give the statue that title. And then it holds crowns. There, there are 25 windows which are set to represent the gemstones of the earth on top of the crown. There are seven spikes in which many believe to represent either the seven oceans or the seven continents. And then the Statue of Liberty is holding a tablet. The tablet she is holding in her left hand is inscribed with the date of the American Apparent Declaration of Independence, July 4th, 1776, written in Roman numerals. And then it has a robe. The Statue of Liberty wears a free-flowing robe, or stola, which powerfully refers to the Roman influence of the goddess Libertas, which was worshipped by freed slaves. And the feet. The Statue of Liberty is wearing sandals with broken chains around her ankle, which represents breaking free from tyranny and servitude. So, yeah, that's the basic history about the Statue of Liberty and the meaning behind it. So what do we learn? The Statue of Liberty represents enlightenment and freedom. Going back to Satan's little season, let's just say he was loosed. I assume there would be some kind of homage paid to Lucifer as a celebration of his release from prison, right? Of his release from the bottomless pit that he's been in for a thousand years. And what if the Statue of Liberty is the statue celebrating his release from the bottomless pit? And I'll tell you some of the reasons on why I think it's quite the possibility. The first reasons is the people who designed the Statue of Liberty and gave it to America, apparently, are Freemasons and high-ranking Freemasons. In fact, the Freemasons called themselves the Enlightened Ones, the follower of the Enlightened One. And the Bible refers to the devil. It says not to marvel at him because he is like an angel of light, deceiving people with his false light. So they refer to the devil as the Enlightened One, which is interesting. They, they refer to Lucifer as the Enlightened One, right? The light bearer, because I believe that's what the word Lucifer means, the bearer of light. And the Statue of Liberty is holding a torch and it's bearing the light. And what's really interesting, there's an inscription on the cornerstone at the Statue of Liberty. And here's what it says. At this site on August 5th, 1884, the cornerstone of the pedestal of the Statue of Liberty, enlightening the world, was laid with the ceremony of William A. Brody, Grand Master of the Masons in the State of New York Grand Lodge members. And that's basically what's said on this little plaque that's near the Statue of Liberty on the cornerstone. So it's very interesting that the designers were Freemasons and they refer to the Statue of Liberty as enlightening the world, bearing a torch, bearing the light, leading the world. Another interesting thing to mention is the Statue of Liberty is obviously in New York. In New York is the home or the headquarters of the United Nations aka the kings of the earth. That's another interesting connection to make. Now, another reason I believe there's a possibility that, that the Statue of Liberty is dedicated to Lucifer or Satan is one of the inspiration, like I said, was the Colossus of Rhodes. And this statue was dedicated to the pagan god Helios. And I believe a lot of these old school pagan gods like Helios, Apollo, Zeus, I think these are all the devil, which is different names. And the inspiration for the Statue of Liberty is the Colossus of Rhodes. In fact, the Statue of Liberty is referred to as the New Colossus. Another very interesting reason I believe that there is a possibility that it's the devil. There is a painting that was made in the 17... There's a painting that was made in 1796 or 1797 by Sir Thomas Lawrence, and it's called Satan Summoning His Legions. So it's a painting dedicated to Satan. And when you look at the painting itself and you look at the face, it, there's an eerie similarity to that of the Statue of Liberty. It looks almost identical, which I find very interesting. And here's a very interesting picture of Marina Abramovic, a well-known Serbian witch who is friends with a lot of celebrities, and uh, Sir Jacob Rothschild standing next to the painting of Satan summoning his legion. So again, 
the similarity of the faces are uncanny. Now here's the final point that I want to make. Uh, let's go back to Revelation. It says that after the, after the battle of Armageddon is over, an angel comes down. And it says in Revelations 20, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. And pay attention to that first part of the verse where it says at the very end, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. Meaning he chained the devil in this bottomless pit. And then when you look at the Statue of Liberty, specifically the feet. So again, going back to the idea that what if this is a celebration of Lucifer or Satan getting let loose out of the bottomless pit. And this statue is dedicated to him, this bronze statue. And at the feet, you can see broken shackles. What if these are the broken shackles from the bottomless pit? And this is basically paying homage. All the things I just mentioned, they're pretty interesting coincidences, right? That this statue was inspired by the Colossus of Rhodes. That the painting, that the painting Satan summoning his legion looks awfully similar to the face of the Statue of Liberty. That the Statue of Liberty happens to be called the bearer of light enlightening the world. That's what the devil is also referred to as by many Luciferians. Now, there are some gray areas in the Bible in terms of how long is Satan's little season? You know, if he's released for his little season, how long exactly is this little season? It doesn't say for sure exactly, but let's just say this. A season is a quarter, right? One fourth, like a, like an actual season, like summer, winter, fall, spring. And the millennial kingdom is a thousand years. Take one quarter of a thousand years, that's 250. And on the tablet that the Statue of Liberty is holding, it says the date's July 4th, 1776, right? What we're taught in history is that this date is just that this date is when we got our freedom from the British Empire. But what if this date is actually the release of Satan from the bottomless pit? And again, I, like I said, what if this is like paying homage to his release and freedom? And on the tablet is inscribed those dates because it's when he was let loose. Quarter of a thousand years is 250. If you add 250 to 1776, it would mean that if he is released, that his season might end in 2026. Again, this is all speculation and this is just me entertaining possible ideas because I don't think you should be scared entertaining ideas outside of your reality bubbles because either way the truth is going to stand regardless. So you shouldn't be scared to entertain ideas. You should be open to them, but again, don't believe anything right away. But, you know, be open to these ideas and entertain them and uh, be ready to have your reality shattered because that's what the Bible does. It shatters realities. But yeah, if the devil truly is let loose and we are in his little season, right, where he deceives the nations, maybe the statue is paying homage to his release, right? The broken shackles around his feet, right? Like when the angel chained him in the bottomless pit. And then after the thousand years expire, those chains were severed and he was let loose. So what if the statue is basically a celebration of him being let loose? right and he's bearing the light and he's showing people the light but um yeah it's very interesting and uh if you really look around it does look like satan is deceiving the world and it really looks like it is his little season there's an inversion of scripture i, I mean many christians today i would argue believe the exact opposite of what the first page of the bible says and believe the opposite of what many of scripture is actually saying because that was the devil's goal all along is to invert scripture and I believe the lies and deceptions have grown in numbers like crazy. Like, there are layers to deceptions. It's insane. Um, but yeah, guys, that was just my little epiphany I had today. Um, do I think it's 100% true? I don't know. I am open to it being true. I am leaning more towards the fact that we might be in this little season. But I'm never going to say anything is for sure. But it does say in the Bible that God conceals a thing and it is the honor of kings to search out his mysteries. So that's what I'm doing, trying to search out his mystery and what he concealed because I think it's our job to, uh, you know, also be interested in figuring this stuff out. Because it's not going to be spoon-fed to you. You actually have to put in some effort and God will guide you. But yeah, I, I thought this was fascinating. And, um, but yeah, I thought this was fascinating. And please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Uh, thank, again, thank you so much for watching and we're out.